Welcome back to Let's Play Gran Turismo 4 Part 4, where we tackle the International A License and a few tests that I've been dreading of doing this entire time, but couldn't be anywhere near as bad as the Cone Slums and the International B License. But anyways, kicking it off here with a test that I'm pretty sure has been in Gran Turismo 1, 2, 3 as well with the Jag. XJ220 and the second section of midfield raceway where you take like double like back-to-back -back sweepers and then a hairpin so this one isn't too hard um, you just got to keep it steady keep it close to the inside and set yourself up for this hairpin right here so you can get a good exit on it I kind of went just a tad wide right there but wasn't too costly for time's sake. So yeah, that one wasn't too bad. Next we're moving to the S's at Suzuka. The, like, I hate this section of the track so much, but this test was pretty easy. Matter of fact, I actually got it on my first attempt, so that was nice. Uh... Same scenario as pretty much the large majority of these tests. They like putting you through the pain of using front wheel drive with the driving assists on. So just take it slow and steady through the S's. Try not to go out too wide on one of the turns at least. Because if you get one of them wrong, you're pretty much going to get the rest of them wrong as well. And yeah, not much really going on here. You're gonna approach the kink where you're gonna use like a little bit of brakes, but not too much. Don't go out too wide because if your right side of tires gets in that green shit, then it's gonna fail you anyways. It doesn't count it as like uh, the pavement or whatever. But yeah, first attempt, pretty easy. Next, I believe we're going to Fuji where we do the final chicane in a R34. Now this one took me a while because this time is really strict so you have to be pretty precise but essentially you brake for the first turn, get back on the gas, brake again just a tad, keep it to the inside and eventually you'll get it. Like I said it took me several attempts. So we're at the final section of Apricot Hill. We're in some kind of weird Ford thing. Apparently it's like a Australian car or some shit. But this one wasn't too bad either. Uh, it was easier than the previous one at least. This one isn't as strict. But keep it to the inside around the sweeper. Try to... You can cut a little bit through the gravel but if you go too far into it you'll slow down a little too much and then that will pretty much uh, screw up your time too much and yeah get a fast exit on the last sweeper and you're golden pretty simple first one lap guide run back at El Capitan this one took a few attempts, mainly because it's like hard to keep your car on track in that uh, that reverse corkscrew sec section. I guess that's like the best way I can explain it. But yeah, you're in some kind of weird Spain, Spanish. I don't fucking know. Some weird kind of Spain car. It's called a seat, Leon Cupra or something. I think it's a Leon Cupra. I don't fucking know. I don't get the whole European crossover sport vehicle things. I don't know what the fuck they are or why they're so popular. Maybe they have a use in real life. I don't fucking know. But in the game, they're kind of unattractive. They're not really powerful. They don't like to handle. They're all front-wheel drive. So, yeah... This is a section that's really tricky, and the pace car is going to slow down a little bit too much right here, and you'll see I smacked him right there. Didn't fail me, at least. But, yeah. In a lot of these tests, you're, uh, the one-lap guide runs, at least, you're at the mercy of the pace car's speed. 
and there's kind of nothing you could do about it. It won't bother speeding up for you in most sections. So the rest of this track was kind of easy after you get across that section at least. Just make sure, like, I went a little too wide and too slow right there, but not too big of a deal. Approaching the bridge now, um, you can take it flat out like I just did, but if you go just a little too wide, you're going to hit the wall too hard and fail it. Almost hit the pace car yet again right there. Approaching the final section of the track, pretty much take the same exact route that you took with the Focus ST in the previous license. Is it the ST or the RS? I don't know. Different letters, same shit, same ugly car. Uh, I think I slowed down just a little bit too much for this turn, but I ended up getting the gold anyway, so there's a little bit of buffer room for it at least. Approaching the invisible finish line, because for some reason they didn't put a finish line on this track. But yeah, almost two seconds, so not bad at all. As long as you just keep the car on track. This test took a while. And the issue with this one is that the S2000 loves to get loose on you. But I love S2000s and sliding around is kind of fun on this game. At least you're not understeering. So. Yeah. Although it was difficult, it wasn't rage inducing. So that's what made it fine in my books. Just gotta keep the car under control in the bus stop section. Once you get past that, you're pretty much in the clear, as long as you're good on time. Now we are in the Roof CTR Yellowbird. One of my favorite European cars. And second half of Trial Mountain. This test was also very challenging. It took me longer than the S2K, but... Pretty much in this part, you just have to keep the car straight because you're going to lose all your grip going over that crest right there. And once you're done getting over that crest, your car is going to want to snap oversteer on you and then you'll pretty much lose control of it. So just keep it straight, keep it steady. And you're going to slide a little bit on that last turn, but not too bad. And that's pretty much it for that one. Second half of Hong Kong, as I mentioned in the previous license test, I'm not a really big fan of this track, but yeah, at least you're not in a weird mid-engine small car thing. This time you're in Alpha with assists, woo. Took this hairpin quite slow, but wasn't too bad at least. I think this only took me a few attempts, it wasn't too bad to pass, and I could have done a lot better on it, so there's a little bit of buffer room for the gold on this one as well, which is nice. Kind of forgot to shift there on time. This thing doesn't really have the, uh, the rev limiter for it. It's pretty low on it, so as soon as you touch the red line, it's going to want to decelerate on you, but it's whatever. Coming out of the final turn, nice and smooth. You don't have to worry about overseer because front wheel drive, and boom. And my emulator started running slow. There we go. Don't touch the... Yeah, okay, yeah, touch the cone. Just fucking... I tickled the cone and it's a fail. So, yeah, that was filmed on a live stream. This whole test was, in fact, and I had my mic on. Because this one was a bitch. Cone Slalom Returns. And this one took me forever, especially with the wheel. So, just have a listen here. Yes, good run, good run so far. Just don't fuck it up.
Please don't tell me that's too early. Yes! Suck my dick! Motherfucker! As you can tell, I wasn't really too happy about having to go through that. So, yeah, that was a coffee break. The Gymkhana, aka the Autocross. And that one has, was easily the one that I was stuck on for the longest amount of time. Ever since I started doing the licenses. It was a bitch. So much, in fact, that I actually started a live stream just to finish that one thing in particular. And you know what? I figured, fuck it, I'll keep the, the wheel cam on for the rest of the tests. Already had it on for that one, so why not? Uh, I believe this is a Clio. Renault Clio. I forgot what car this was, but it did like to snap on you a lot, so kind of hard to control. Slow section at Alper Paris. One of my favorite tracks. I actually really like it. Uh, what car is that? A Citroen thing. Family car. I don't fucking know. Now we're on the new Fuji Speedway layout. Uh, the 2005 GT circuit. And you can see the second half of the track is completely different. Not a really big fan of this track, but... It looks cool, at least. It looks like a brand new track. And there's a ton of runoff there. You almost see... You almost see, yes. Great English, me. You almost saw I hit the pace car there, so... Yet again, another instance where the pace car kind of... You're kind of at the mercy of it. This section is a lot less tight than the 90 circuit. But even though there's a lot of runoff right there, if you go into that runoff, you're going to have all four wheels in the grass, and it's going to fail you anyways. So just try to stay out of it. And if you happen to get all the way into the runoff anyways, you're going to fail to begin with by time's sake, so just stay out of it. Now we're approaching the new section of the track, which... There's, like, no remnants of the 90 circuit on this uh, layout anymore, which is kind of weird-looking how, like, the track looks completely different now. Even though, like, I don't fucking know. Same location, same track, just different layout. From the 90s layout to the 2005 layout. Yeah, this section is a really fun. It kind of reminds me of the, the slow section at Circuit of the Americas. Like, the entire track was fast-paced, and then you get to that point, it's like you're slowing down for some reason. It's like, what? Kind of throws you off a little bit. Going down the one-mile-long straightaway. Pretty sure this straightaway is just as long as the one on the Nürburgring, but I could be wrong. Just a long wait. And then you're anticipating if you're actually going to make it on time or not, so... For some reason, I feel like the starting line is moved further back after you start the race. Am I the only one who thinks that? It's kind of weird. Like, you start out further in front, but then whenever you start doing laps, the, the line moves back a bit. I don't know. Yeah, here's the first rally test on the Swiss Alps. Another returning track from GT2 and GT3. Probably was in GT1. I don't know. I never played GT1. Pretty much here, just keep it close to the inside. Try not to swing out too far. And eventually you'll get it. There's no really pro tips I can give you on any sort of dirt or snow test, really. Here we are at another snow circuit called Charminex. I have no idea how to pronounce this shit sometimes. I'm not even gonna try. I'm just gonna call this the super turny, technical, snowy place. Fuck it, that's good enough. So, same thing as every other snow test so far. Keep it slow and steady, keep it to the inside, don't swing out too far wide and hit every single wall on the way there. This one's somewhat easy. 
Uh, you can see by my previous last time, I got another 666 Hell Satan. So that's neat. Keep it slow throughout this section. Like I said, keep it in second gear because first gear is kind of pointless. This is going to slow you down even more. Because you have a bunch of wheel spin and it's going to help the turbo spool up faster. So just keep it like that. And there you go. About a solid second. So here we are at the Nürburgring in another Merced site. It's a BMW this time. Yeah, a fucking BMW on the Nürburgring. You never thought I would see the fucking day with their circle jerk for Mercedes going on ever since the start of this fucking LP. But yeah, this section's kind of difficult. You gotta break a little bit before you hit the crest on that uphill section just so you can stay on the track to begin with. Just follow the line I did right there. And yeah, it's a little strict, but it's not as bad as other ones in this test so far. So here's the second, no, third to final test of the, the license. This one wasn't too bad. You're in some side, you're in some sort of like weird TVR thing. It's kind of hideous, not gonna lie. Just gotta take the chicane pretty fast. And yeah, that's basically the only tip I could give you for this because you just take the chicane fast. And this is the one you've all been dreading. And take a look at this shit. Yeah, I wasn't very happy about that. Thought I'd throw that in there because... Ugh. If there's any bad tests with, like, the pace car fucking you up, it's this one. It's 100% this one. So now we're in the Mercedes. Woo. Yeah, you thought it was the end of that, didn't you? No, it's not. More Mercedes, more Nürburgring. And guess what? There's more in the next fucking license. So, difficulty-wise, this one isn't actually too bad. As far as, like, time sake goes, it's very, very lenient. Considering you're doing, like, a nine-minute lap around the fucking green hell. Uh, the car itself, it's really balanced. It actually likes to turn a little bit more than the other land yachts that Mercedes makes. But, yeah, pretty much the only problem you're going to have with this is staying on track in certain sections if you're not really familiar with the track. And the f goddamn pace car. There's like two or three sections where the pace car can really screw you over. Uh, this section is kind of important to get good. Uh, you just got to tap on the brakes a little bit and keep it on the road. Keep up your speed because you carry that momentum all the way down the straight. And you could even, like, bump giraffe the, the pace car all the way down, too, which is kind of cool. The pace car is not going to speed up for you for some stupid reason, so you kind of just got to push him along and break a tad earlier than he does. I've always wondered if I stay on his bumper all the way up to that turn, if I could just, like, launch him into the gravel. But that would only hurt me as well, because if I still pass the pace car, it fails me, so... Kinda can't do that. Here comes that section again in the other test with the BMW. You're gonna see that I take a lot of these sections slow. It's just because I want to actually just... My number one goal is just keeping the car on track to begin with. And actually getting a some completed laps in and then adjusting my speed throughout some of the runs where I need it to and yeah it's pretty much how I approach this one not really familiar with all the turns like the names of them on the Nürburgring I know them on uh, Le Mans or Circuit de la Sarthe but not so much the Nürburgring so can't really explain like all the sections I'm going through and everything but yeah there's kind of like not much to explain here I just take it easy throughout the whole thing and it's still golded it by a very solid amount so this test isn't that hard 
As long as you know the track, like I said. This is one of the sections where the pace car can really fuck you over, so just brake preemptively for it. But the next section is even worse. It's a area that I failed in the previous attempt, like you guys saw. This pace car slows down way too much for this section. You can take it so much faster, but like I said, you're at the mercy of it, so you kind of got to just sacrifice it to begin with. So yeah. From this point on, there's kind of not much going on, but I still have to at least keep somewhat of a commentary going throughout the whole thing, so... yeah. Took this section a little too slow, but then again, I suck at that corner. As long as you get a good exit on it, at least, then you could carry all that momentum throughout this straight, and you'll gain quite a bit of time because of it. Just stay in the slipstream. I don't think I actually catch the pace car on the stretch of road, so you don't have to worry about that. See, I let off the throttle right there just so I don't get too close, because I know there's going to be a braking section up here, and I want to have at least enough reaction time. Just a little brake right there. It's really easy to go off track in that part, so... Don't worry about losing too much time there because you have to make it a wrap, like you have to complete the lap to begin with. So that's kind of a little bit more important. And up approaching the carousel is another place that you can get fucked over by the pace car. I actually hit it here on my first attempt. So you just gotta slow down preemptively for it. I think on my first attempt I was a lot closer to the pace car, so that's why I hit it, but I was a lot further back this time. And this is a section with the internet or the National A license graduation tests in the RX-7, so... One good thing about all these Nürburgring tests is that it teaches you the track, or at least the most difficult sections of the track, before you actually do this test and the graduation test for the super license. So that's, I guess that's kind of the good thing about doing all these Nürburgring tests. This section it, I'm not particularly good at because I don't really get to hear that often. Of course everybody's best section of any track is going to be the first section. Because of the times they have to restart a certain thing or... Well, yeah, that's pretty much the reason why. Don't go too wide right there. I always fail on that corner. Coming up to YouTube corner, which is what I like to call. Pretty much like the section on the track where all the fucking Nürburgring videos are filmed. This section, I think I always take a little too slow, but I think I did okay there, at least compared to what I normally do. It's kind of weird how the the track formation right there, it, it's kind of like has a uh, convex shape. Convex? Yeah, convex shape to the, to the road. Yeah, just break down a third gear for that turn, and then this whole section right here is flat out. So, pretty much down through here. Kind of a blind crest. Even more blind with the pace car in front of you. The pace car slow down, or slows down way too much. And you kind of have to slow down because of it. Tap the brakes there. Down a fourth gear. Down a third gear for this turn. Approaching the half-ass carousel, which is what I like to call it. Still has that weird concrete tile shit. I don't know why the fuck it's right there or on the carousel, but it is. And yeah, approaching the straightaway. It's really easy to go too fast around these corners and then fly off into the grass and then you lose all that progress throughout this, so... Don't worry about taking it too slow, just... If you pass that gate thing, 
also sees your time. If you pass underneath that uh that gate thing at around I'd say like before seven minutes, fifty five seconds and you're pretty good. That's like a good timestamp, I guess, for reference. I'll leave another reference wherever you go under the bridge up here as well. I pass this by like twelve seconds. So if you pass the bridge before eight thirty at least and you're Pretty much guaranteed the gold as long as you don't fuck it up. Slow down preemptively right here because the pace car does it. Just keep it on the asphalt. Don't touch the grass. You made it this far, so just stay on the road. That's all I can really say. And there you go. Beat this one by a solid about, about 10 seconds. So yeah. It does take a while, just for the sheer length of it, but difficulty-wise, it's not bad. This one was actually, difficulty-wise, a lot more difficult. You're gonna see, going down the Molson Stray, the wheel just starts going crazy, and once it starts shaking, the force feedback just carries it all the way down the street. So... 24-hour races are gonna suck in the Group C Le Mans prototypes. The wheel's gonna be shaking like that all the way down the street, so... Yeah, this one kind of wore me out a little bit. Also, if you haven't played this game before, which... I don't know why the fuck anyone would be watching this Let's Play if they haven't played Gran Turismo 4 before. It's been out since 2005. But they kind of just throw you into the seat of a Group C Le Mans prototype. And you go from like, oh, a bunch of slow cars and shit to like, holy fuck, this motherfucker's fast. Approaching Molson Corner, I keep it in third gear because there are no assists in this test. So, number one thing is avoiding wheel spin right there. And braking at the perfect time, of course. One, so you don't break too early and lose too much time. Two, so you don't break too late and go flying into the gravel. And yeah, the wheel starts get, like getting out of hand again. Approaching Indianapolis, Indianapolis, fuck me. Keep it in third gear. Approaching Arnage. It says drop down to second gear, but don't listen to it. And there you go. Barely beat it, but there was room for improvement still, so. There you have it. The International A license has all been golded, and we get our prize cars. So, yeah. Let's see what these prize cars are. Go ahead and click it, damn it. Past me. First one, for all bronze, we get the Nismo 270R, which is basically a tuned Zenki 240SX S14, so that's kind of cool. Next we get the GTR Concept from the Tokyo Motor Show of 2001. Very fucking ugly compared to what the final product was. And finally, for all golds, we get this thing. Not a particularly good car, but it's weird and funky collector car thing, I guess, so it's whatever. So there you go, all gold trophies, gold coffee break. Don't know why I'm scrolling around all this stuff. This was all recorded several days ago, so yeah. Now let's check out the prize cars. Go to home. All right, there you go. So yeah, International A license is out of the way, finally. But there's still one big license we have to do. This super license, which is all one lap time trials. Without pace cars, at least. And it wasn't really fun, but difficulty-wise, it wasn't too bad. It's just time consuming, that's all it is. So yeah, stick around for more GT4.